pulled it right out. And then we ran back to work. And then on the way home, he goes to the emergency room. I didn't see him for a couple days. Feel free to call your son or say, can Anybody on any team who's welcome to come and help make pies because lots of pies. Probably nine. Nine or ten. We haven't determined yet because we need to know the deadline. Yeah. Mid to late morning. Yeah. Time to be announced. Yes, the private gave us money for it. Yay! All right. Any other announcements? Let's take over. Yes, Brett! Oh. <laughs> I have a German one. Maybe I should go. The only one I could use is the other Next Sunday, we have our golf. She understood German. I can't. Very good. Alright, any other announcements for the sake of the whole group? Yes, Sue. Christmas food baskets. I have the names. I have the sign-up sheet going around. Uh, we're doing 50 baskets, 35 small families, 15 large. So we'll be delivering them on Saturday, the 17th of December. Um, so if you want to do that too, feel free. Mark the calendar. Very good. Thank you. All right. Okay, next Sunday at the end of Bible at the end of Sunday school, we're going to start practicing with the children for the Christmas program. We're going to meet with, with uh, Lisa up in the sanctuary so we can practice with the piano. So it's really important for the kids to be here as much as possible so they can practice their music. And then the Christmas program is on the 11th of December, that Sunday. And so we're going to need the children to be here a little bit early before Sunday school on that day so we can get ready. So just keep that in mind. Keep it on your calendar. So, yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah, the Sunday school price beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Yay! Yes. Any announcements? You good? All right, yeah, we'll uh, pretty much wrap up Bible study. So Sunday school, yeah, you can come back when you uh, hear us pray the Lord's Prayer or hear us singing. Uh, probably a little, little after 10, 10, 10 ish. Definitely by 10, 10. Okay? All right, before you go, let's do our catechism du jour, okay? Let's do our catechism du jour. Third edition of the Lord's Prayer. Here we go. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what does this mean? The good and gracious will of God is done even without our prayer. But we pray in this position that it may be done among us also. How is God's will done? God's will is done when He breaks and hinders every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature which do not want us to hallow God's name or let his kingdom come. And when he strengthens and keeps us firm in his word and faith until we die, this is his good and gracious will. All right, so my school is dismissed. 10-10. Uh, good target. I've yeah, already mentioned voters meeting next Sunday at 4 p.m. Uh, Thanksgiving chapel service uh, will be uh, Tuesday afternoon, 2:30. Uh, in a week and a half from now already. Uh, and then uh, Thanksgiving Eve service, prayer and preaching. Uh, we'll do that the night before Thanksgiving, 7 p.m. Uh, and then uh, Christmas caroling. Uh, we're kind of looking at Sunday, December 18th. Going to set, set that date aside, especially in the late afternoon or the evening time uh, for Christmas caroling. More details to come. All right. All right. So I'm kind of torn, and I think I've already made my decision. 
Uh, we're starting to wrap up this uh, study of the Songs of Isaiah uh, because I would like to start a new topic uh, the Sunday after Thanksgiving when we have a new church year uh, with the, uh, saint, the saints of, uh, of church history. So I was like, well, we got uh, uh, a special celebration here uh, hosted by the Greens uh, Coffee Fellowship. So we can rush through a text, or we can just bask in all of its glory for a week and a half. And so I think we're going to choose the second. Right? So this is going to be our last song of Isaiah that we're going to cover together as a class. Okay? Uh, so, uh, we don't need to finish, so I'm going to try not to rush you, uh, and as we have conversation and, and thoughts, feel free to speak forth. Uh, you know, if you're kind of thinking, oh, I don't want to share that because we're running out of time, don't worry about it. I give you permission. Okay. All right, so, uh, our last song of Isaiah that I want to cover with you is Arise and Shine. Uh, any Latin scholars among us? Sergei Illuminari. Hmm? Alright. So, Illuminari. Rise and shine. Alright. So, here's the overview. Again, this is over a week and a half. The context and organization of Isaiah chapter 60. The text of uh, the first six verses. Uh, and then the application and closing thoughts. Which we'll probably save for next year. All right, so let's take a look at the context of this last song. So we'll cover themes, we'll cover how this chapter is organized in one of our Bibles, uh, and then get to a little bit of the style of chapter 16. I think there's a lot of good stuff in the style of this song that I really want to uh, uh, bring about to you uh, today. <laughs> so the themes. So again, just to kind of catch you up to speed, since we have a lot of uh, guests and visitors with us today. Uh, so we've been covering Isaiah and various poems and, and songs throughout the whole of Isaiah. And uh, we just finished all what we call the suffering servant songs of Isaiah, uh, especially in chapters 40 to 55. Uh, and also made a note that we normally call Isaiah the fifth gospel uh, that has been known as a nickname for this book. But we can also say that just chapters 40 to 55 as one section can also be understood as the fifth gospel and the patterns of like the preaching of John the Baptist, the ministry of Jesus, the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and that commission to get that word out to the nations. Uh, that's all covered very nicely and almost in order from chapters 40 to 55. So sometimes we, we think that uh, yeah, the fifth gospel or the book of comfort uh, is a uh, key section here. So we finish that. We move on to chapter 56 to the end. And this section of Isaiah seems to hone in on the divine character of God. In some ways we could say it has a feel of the end times. Uh, in this section... There's a very popular Bible reading about the new heavens and the new earth, which sounds a lot like what other book of the Bible? Revelation, Revelation right? Uh, this chapter, or this section, it feels like, it sounds like, the images are very similar to the book of Revelation, okay? Okay. Um, talking about the glory of the Lord, or the future glory of God's faithful people, and that God's salvation will be abundantly clear to everyone, to the whole world. And even at the very end of the, of the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, it even covers a, a final judgment uh, as well. So again, it has that feel of revelation. Now to hone in, give you the broad picture, now we're going to uh, narrow in our focus just a little bit, getting right into chapter 60, okay? So we're going to hone in just a little bit more. So chapters 58 and 59. Uh, one of the key themes throughout uh, these two chapters is that the way to God is barred to those who persist in evil and unbelief. 
God has some severe warnings uh, in these chapters, talking about how he will not hear the prayers of those who fast or those who gather for worship only to quarrel, fight, and oppress others. God is not pleased when we gather together for worship or we gather and when we fast and do our spiritual disciplines, but we still quarrel, fight, and oppress others. Right? That is... Uh, clear and a warning to us in chapter 58. God's also not pleased with those who seek their own pleasure instead of taking delight in Him on the Sabbath. And He has some very harsh words uh, again towards the end of chapter 58. And then in chapter 59, uh, those who oppress others and are dishonest or violent, they don't know or they won't know the way of peace. So some severe warnings uh, leading up to chapter 60. Right. And then, towards the end of chapter 59, there seems to be an opening up. God is opening up the doors. He is opening up the way of peace. Uh, because, if you look at the end of uh, chapter 59 in Isaiah, we got to get the verse numbers correct. All right. You'll notice uh, especially you know, uh, verses 19, 20, and 21. Uh, can someone read uh, the end of Isaiah chapter 59, uh, beginning, uh, let's say, beginning at verse 19. externally. You know, that when we have a lot of 
uh, sin, a lot of bad attitudes, a lot of hatred, a lot of uh, extra wickedness kind of all around us, whether that's directed at us personally or whether it just we just see it and feel it and we just say, ew, right? And then it hurts us, right? That this chapter is really good news and it brings the light of Christ uh, so that uh, we know where there's hope uh, and we know that God is still with us. So here are some key images uh, that's going to be in this psalm and in the next couple chapters. It's going to talk about wealth. It's going to have a lot of pictures about foreign kings and foreign nations and people coming to Zion and peace and security and that God is the eternal source of light. Okay, those are going to be kind of your key images that are just going to keep on coming at you one after the other, okay, throughout the next couple chapters. So we'll bask in these pictures and see how they all mesh together for our comfort. Got it? Questions? Themes going into chapter 6. All right. You're primed and ready to go, aren't you? <laughs> okay, but I got a couple more. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's take a look now at chapter 60 itself. Okay, let's get a broad picture of all of chapter 60. Uh, so in the Hebrew text, and this is where, you know, I, I had a dilemma. Because it's like, well, the whole chapter 60 is a poem. It's one poem. There are no sense breaks uh, that the Hebrews gave us. No paragraph markers, nothing. It's all one big chunk. <coughs> you look at it, and it's just like, oh boy, that's a big poem. Right? I mean, I like short poems because poetry is not my specialty. And so I like short poems because then I only have to think about a few things. <laughs> but, and I also uh, am torn with, you know, that sometimes I'm a big fan, or I'm becoming more and more a big fan of less is more. Uh, and that when we hone in on just a few things rather than the whole thing, you know, uh, sometimes uh, that can be more beneficial uh, for our discussion and for our learning. So I decided to really hone in on the first, like, six to nine verses. But let's take a look at the bigger picture just for a moment. All right? Now, our ESVs uh, also have just one chapter. Right, one heading for the whole chapter, the future glory of Israel. Uh, the uh, EHV, which is, I think it's English Heritage Version, which is the preferred Bible of the uh, Wisconsin Synod, uh, their heading is, A New Day Dawns for Zion. Right. What other headings do we have in our Bibles uh, for chapter 60? What do you got? The glory of Zion. The glory of Zion. All right. Right? Short and swimful to the point, right? Glory is on. Yeah. A glorified. Mm. A glorified, right? Past tense. Or past tense, but also a uh, passive voice, right? Someone's going to glorify it, right? It's glorified. Yeah. I actually uh, can answer the next question on this one, too, because there's a phrase that we're going to Gentiles bless Zion if you grew 18. Okay, so verse 1 to 18, yeah. the nations bless Zion. Of Gentiles bless Zion. The Gentiles bless Zion, okay? And the starting for 19 is God the glory of his people. God the glory of his people. Okay? Interesting. So we got one Bible that breaks it up a little bit. They went against, they went against the Hebrews. That's bold. But I like it. Yeah. Oh, we got another one over here? Any other headings? No? Wow, we're all, uh, yeah. God is coming. God is coming. Ooh. Yeah, straight to the point, right? Uh, there's no confusion here, right? God's coming. All right. Yeah. All right. Go once, go twice. Right. Very good. So I think uh, we can uh, conclude <coughs> that for the most part, most of our Bibles do like one big section. One big poem. So, there we go. Okay, the style of chapter 60. As I mentioned, the entire chapter is poetry. And it's one big poem. All 
right? Uh, most verses uh, in the Hebrew text are two lines long, and each line is made of two half phrases of three to four words in Hebrew each. So they're actually very nice and neat and regular, uh, and so I put it in small print, but just so you kind of see what it looks like, I put it in English. Uh, but, you know, uh, the two lines in verse 5. Uh, how about, uh, does want to read verse 5 in English real quick? And you shall sing and be radiant, and your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall return to you, and the wealth of the nations shall come to you. Alright, good. Hey, and actually the same words I had here. So, uh, in the Hebrew, there's only two lines. Okay, uh, in my ESV, um, I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six lines in my English translation. Okay, but so this is how it's formatted, this is how it's organized. You shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and exalt. As abundance of sea turn to you, wealth of nations come to you. Right, I tried to shorten it and abbreviate it because, again, Hebrew is concise, English translations of poetry are very verbose, uh, and that's a struggle. And, and here's one of the points. English Bibles can't handle Hebrew conciseness, uh, and English Bibles also have printing constraints. Right? There are printing constraints when you print it on a page, right? Um, you know, uh, most of our Bibles are two columns per page, right? You got the two column per page. Uh, uh, who doesn't have a two column per page formatting? Okay, you actually have one column, right? With notes. Uh, the, uh, and, and some of our study Bibles have like a blank half page where you can take notes or doodle, right? Or both. Taking notes by doodling. Big fan of that. Yes, I'm a big fan of that. All right, but a lot of our Bibles will have two columns per page. I don't know why, they just do, right? Someone decided it was a holy thing to do, and so they like to catch it. It's cheaper? I don't know. I don't think it is. I think it's cheaper just to have no spaces and just go fill the whole page, full justified. But then that'd be hard to read. That'd be hard to read. That's hard to read. Yeah. But because of that, there are a lot of printing constraints, and you can't keep the lines intact, right? You know, what is two lines in Hebrew is six lines or more uh, in your English versions. Or if you have it, like, on a tablet or even smaller screen on a cell phone, you might have, like, 20 lines, depending on, you know, how, how narrow your screen is. So again, this is kind of how it looks on most of our English Bibles. Then you shall see it be radiant, your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. All right. Uh, did your Bible pretty much look like that? Yeah. Yeah. Now here's a little hint. They do the English translations do give you actually a little bit of the sense of poetry. You just got to know how to read it. Right. So, you shall see and be radiant, and you'll notice that it doesn't line up perfectly on the left. You notice that? When it lines up perfectly on the left, that's a new line in Hebrew. Okay? When it lines up perfectly on the left, it's a new line in Hebrew. And when you see a slight indent, like about two space indent, that tells you it's like the second half of a line. Okay, it's the second half of a line. And then when you see a way, way, way big indent, like a massive eight space indent, they just ran out of room here. And it, it's supposed to continue. So this is, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. So when you see like a really, really big indent like that, you gotta keep on reading the line, okay? And when you do that, you'll get the best sense for how it's organized. Does that make sense? All right? I think I figured out the trick. It was like, how are English Bibles doing? Like, there actually is a rhyme and reason to it. But uh, unless you look at it and compare and contrast, it's hard to tell. All right? 
So, in a perfect world, if there are no constraints, and we can just print galore, uh, you know, and make our Bibles miraculously expand and decrease, and have like a, a nice, neat way of doing it. Yes, I know, our screens can do it, but I'm old and I don't do that. <laughs> All right. So ideally, this is how it would look. Then you shall see and be radiant. Little indent to let you know it's, that's a half line. Your heart shall thrill and exalt. New line. Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. Alright? You get it like that. You actually get a really nice feel for what the Hebrew poetry is trying to convey. It's, it's pretty much exactly how it's formatted in Hebrew. And it gives you the full thought without breaking it into a new line. Alright? Because when it's formatted like this, champagne falls down from the skies and confetti and things just start jumping out at you like crazy in colors. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically speaking. <laughs> so, but when you see it, it's like, whoa! You'll notice how like these half lines are so beautifully uh, constructed and how they compare and contrast and how they supplement each other as far as what they're trying to communicate and even the style of how they communicate. So then, you shall see and be radiant, right? Then we're going to go back to you. They're going to intensify you, right? Your heart shall thrill and exalt, right? So seeing and be radiant, thrilling and exalting. You know, uh, it's just more uh, kind of like synonymous thought, or maybe even a little bit of an intensity, right? It goes from you to your heart, uh, seeing it be radiant, then going to thrilling and exalting, okay? And this is one line. Because, all right, so they're going to give you a reason, right? Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. Right? Notice that these two lines go together, right? or these two phrases go together. The abundance of the sea and the wealth of the nations. Right? Uh, kind of like uh, maybe similarity, maybe uh, another example. Right? It's just building upon what was before. Okay? Uh, and that the abundance and wealth, right? synonyms, are turned to you and shall come to you. Okay? Um, but when it's formatted like this, you can see those connections a lot clearer. All right. I have a I have a little footnote there on the sure. book. Yeah. It says Hebrew, your heart shall tremble and roll wide. All right. What, verse five, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. So footnotes, right? Your heart shall tremble and grow wide. All right. So uh, what that's saying is. Uh, the vocabulary uh, is, there are a couple different ways to interpret the same word. So Hebrew also has homonyms, right? They also have homonyms, uh, and they also have, is that what it is? I forget, English uh, language arts people. So when you have the same word, it sounds the same, but it's different spelled, right? So like hanger and hanger. Those are homophones. And homonyms, same word, different meaning. Like there and there. There and there. No, because I think that's a homophone. That's a homophone. Bat and bat. Bat and bat. Yes, bat and bat. And bat. Right? Uh, the word B-A-T can be a lot of different things. Right? It could be an animal. Or it could be a piece of lumber, right? And, and uh, I, I think this is a homonym here, where another way to translate it is, uh, your heart shall tremble and grow wide. Uh, that uh, there are a couple homonyms uh, that could be wood. And, and 
it could be within the realm of possibility uh, that it could be translated that. So they make note. And sometimes it is a different word altogether. It just depends on uh, the text. Uh, they look at all the copies of the scriptures, and then if there is like a, you know, uh, two different trains of thought or two different kind of paper trails, they try to give those extra meanings or possible meanings uh, in the footnotes. Okay. All right. But I have a feeling they chose thrill and exalt because that seems to work better with seeing and being read. That'd be my guess. All right, verse 18, more <laughs> beautiful parallel thoughts, right? Um, verse 18, uh, someone has ESV, can someone read that for us from ESV? Verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your wall salvation and your gates praise. All right, so... Uh, again, uh, the beautiful parallel thoughts, right? Uh, violence. Violence shall no more be heard in your land. Right? And notice uh, a parallel thought, right? It's uh, very synonymous uh, words and phrases in the next half line. Uh, when violence comes devastation or destruction. Uh, and then they skip the verb, technically, in the Hebrew. Uh, shall no more be within your borders. Okay? But what's really cool about this is how the Hebrew puts it is the next phrase. You shall call your walls salvation. Hey, walls. Hey, salvation. Right? You're going to call your walls salvation, right? City walls. Uh, and you shall call, again, the verb's not in there, and you shall call your gates praise. Okay? Again, salvation and praise go together. But what's really cool is that they put the verb in the first line, and then they skip the verb and apply it in the second line. Like, nice and neat in a very uh, regimented, skilled way. And this is a really good example uh, of the beautiful poetry uh, and, and the parallel thoughts that uh, Isaiah chapter 60 uh, really drive home. So, just uh, something that I noticed and wanted to share with you. And then the final thing we want to do before we uh, cut for um, uh, our uh, fellowship coffee is that the style is visually stunning, right? Uh, in verse 6 and elsewhere, it talks about lifting up your eyes and see. And you're going to see this, and you shall see that, and you shall see this, and you shall see that. Uh, it's very descriptive, and there's a lot of vivid pictures of what will happen, right? Um, Let's, uh, can someone read out loud verses 10 to 14 in chapter 60? And as you listen to it, or as you read it, if you want, you can close your eyes if you're listening. What do you see? Okay? As you hear this, as you read it, verses 10 to 14 in chapter 60, what do you see? Uh, can someone read it? Foreigners shall build up your walls, and the kings shall minister to you. For my wrath I struck with you, my favor I have had no sooner. Your gates shall be open continually. Day and night they shall not be shut. The people may bring to you the wealth of the nations with your kings and led procession. For the nation of kingdoms that will not serve you shall perish. Those nations shall be utterly laid waste. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons of those who afflicted you shall come to and those you, and all who despise you shall bow down at your feet. They shall call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One. Thank you. What do you see? There's so many things going on. Here. It's just picture after picture after picture. What pictures do you see? Okay, wise men coming to Jesus, right? We have another picture painted for us. Um, and I think there's even a clearer picture of that in a couple of verses previous, which we'll get to next week. Okay, wise men coming to Jesus. What else do you see? Solomon's temple. Hmm? Solomon's temple. Solomon's temple, right? Solomon's temple, you see. All right? Nehemiah. Nehemiah rebuilding the temple. Right? You get Solomon's temple, and then you get rebuilding the temple. 
What's being shipped or carried into sin for that temple? No, no Cedars. Cedars. You know, we'll smell the wood. Right? No. Oh, I love it. Right? All these cedar planks are coming their way to rebuild. Uh, it's like it just got dropped off at their doorstep, right? Not only are they bringing all these amazing things, they're doing it all in peace. The gates are wide open, they're showing up with their king, they're bringing you all this wonderful stuff. Yeah, yeah what, what good is a gate if it's wide open? <laughs> right? If, if your gate is to protect you, and it's wide open, right, that assumes that you are, you are safe, right? There is no security threat, right? Right? There's no security threat, and it's wide open. Wide open to receive good things, like cedar planks. Yeah. Well, on the other side of that is, is that because God is saying your gates shall be open, mm -hmm. but I'm going to keep you safe. Yeah. You don't have to worry about keeping yourself safe. So open your gates to the people because I'm protecting you. Exactly. Good. Good. Yeah, all these pictures in just a few verses, and there's more. But uh, I think I'd like to stop right there. And uh, we'll pick it up with uh, very any other pictures that we have uh, uh, in the stunningness of uh, chapter 60, and then get to the text of the song itself. So, as we close, uh, hey, newlyweds, you want to come out? <laughs> Fellowship is sponsored by the Greens. All right, so thank you so much for uh, sharing joy with us. And uh, how about we uh, have a word of prayer, shall we? Lord God, Heavenly Father, you instituted holy matrimony, blessed and honored it with the presence of your son at the marriage of Cana and Galilee, and you continue to protect and preserve it. We thank you for the fatherly love and grace which you have bestowed upon Kevin and Pat throughout their marriage. You have accompanied them with loving kindness and tender mercy, visited them with your comfort, strengthened them in sorrow and sickness, and crowned their life with every blessing. You have enabled them to walk in marital love and fidelity, holding them to each other in sickness and health and adversity and prosperity, and granting them strength, patience, and faithfulness. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would continue to be with them and help them to continue to grow and develop uh, as husband and wife in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Kevin and Pat, the almighty and gracious God, continue to bless you that all you may do may please him in both body and soul, and that you would live together in holy life until your life's and holy love until your life's end. Amen. Amen. How about we sing praise God for more blessings of love? Praise God for